The time is 12 o'clock. Here is the midday news. First, the top stories. Suspected headsmen attack motorists on Abdelkuta Ibora Road. Governor Akere Dolu asked Ondo workers to forgo inherited salary arrears. Namdekano says politicians pressurizes him for 2019 poll support. 10 million Nigerians are asthmatic patients, says OAU professor. And on the foreign scene, Ivory Coast troops move to confront rebel soldiers. And North Korea says new rocket tested can carry large nuclear warhead. Good afternoon, I am Chiena Evo, bringing you the news in detail shortly. Suspected armed headsmen have taken over the road leading from Abelkuta to Ibora in Oyo State. The headsmen for several hours on Monday attacked motorists who passed the road dispossessing them of valuables. Following the attack, several motorists were held up for several hours on the Abelkuta and Ibora side of the road. Among those affected by the attack were scores of candidates from Abelkuta posted by the Joint Admission Matriculation Board JAM to Ibora to write their Unified Tertiary Matriculation Examination. The parents of the affected UTME candidates who called on Rock City FM program Daybreak Show say they and their children are trapped in Ibora. They called on the police to clear the road of the armed headsmen. The construction work has begun on a six-lane 12-kilometer expressway linking Aton with Agbara in the Adodwata local government area of Ogun State. The project includes a 600 meters bridge from Lusada Junction. Works and Infrastructure Commissioner on Lamilekwa Debite, who made this known to newsmen in Abelkuta, says some houses have been demolished for the project. The contractor handling the project, according to the commissioner, have been mobilized with funds to start the construction and meet the delivery period. The 57th Annual General Meeting and Annual Conference of the Nigerian Association of Chambers of Commerce, Industry, Mines and Agriculture, NASIMA, will hold in Abelkuta, Lyogun State Capital on Wednesday, May 24 and Thursday, May 25. The AGM, according to NASIMA's Director General, Emmanuel Kuban, will hold at the June 12 Cultural Center, Kuto, Abelkuta, on Wednesday at noon. The annual general conference will follow on Thursday at the same venue to discuss enhancing ease of doing business in Nigeria and impetus to economic recovery and sustainable growth. Former President Olusegun Obasanjo will preside over the conference, while the acting president Yemi Oshibaju will be the guest of honor. Also on Thursday, there will be the investiture of the new national president of Nasima, Iyalode Alabalosin, at the marquee of Olusha Gomasanjo Presidential Library by 6 p.m. The chief host of the event is Governor Ibikole Amosu State, while Governor Mohamed Abubakar, along with Southwest State Governors, Diplomats, Captains of Industry, and members of the Federal Executive Council. Governor Rotimi Akere Dolu of Ondo State has pleaded with workers on the payroll of the state government to waive the outstanding salaries owed them by the Mimiko administration. He promises to meet the civil servants to convince them that the state government lacks the financial resources to clear the salary arrears. The governor who made the call while receiving the report of the committee on the arrears of salaries of public servants at the government house in Akure says whether the salary arrears should be regarded by the civil servants as the sacrifice to salvage the state. The committee chairman, Deputy Governor Agbola Ajayi, puts the salary arrears of 380.5 billion naira, in addition to gratuities totaling 41.5 billion naira. The last administration, according to him, owed the workers six months' salaries, August 2016 to January 2017, before leaving office in February this year. However, the Akiri Dolu administration has paid salaries of February till April 2017 to workers and the arrears of August 2016, leaving the outstanding moms to five moms. A senior advocate, Femi Falano, has accused the Buhari administration of failing to implement the manifesto of the All Progressives Congress, APC, to restructure the country. 
Falano speaking at a public lecture to mark the 65th birthday of Senator Adegwinga Kaka in Ijebuibo, says that majority of Nigerians voted for APC at the 2015 poll because they believed it will restructure the country in line with the principle of true federalism. The activist lawyer explains that previous presidents failed to undertake the restructuring of the country because they're beneficiaries of what he described as a distorted federal system. He explains how true federalism could be actualized. The chairman of the public lecture, Chief Ayo Adebanjo, insisted on the implementation of recommendations of the 2014 Constitutional Review Conference to address the challenges facing the country. Leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, Ipob Namdekanu, says he is under pressure from politicians, especially those in the southeast region, to support their 2019 polls agenda. The politicians, according to Kanu, who is on a court bill, are asking for the support of his group with a promise to help push the course of the proposed Biafra if they win the polls. Kanu, who spoke while hosting newsmen at his residence in Umwahia, however, says the agenda of such politicians after assuming office is to make money within the period of four to eight years they will stay in office. He asks people in the eastern part of the country who are distancing themselves from the Biafra struggle that they will regret the decision because, according to him, Biafra will be actualized. More than 10 million Nigerians are said to be suffering from asthma. Consultant pulmonologist of the Obafemi Awolowo University, Ileife, Professor Gregory Erabor, who made this known, asked the presidency to give the disease the attention it requires. For instance, the professor says there is the need to train more nurses, doctors, and other health practitioners on how to manage the disease. He also wants governments to consider subsidizing the high cost of drugs for the treatment of the disease to enable common asthmatic patients in the country to afford it. You are still listening to the Midday News on Rock City 101.9 FM. Up next, we bring you foreign business and sports news. Please stay with us. Now on the foreign scene. Ivory Coast's military says it has launched an operation to restore order after three consecutive days of protests by Mutina soldiers. Troops are advancing towards Bwake to confront the rebel soldiers. Armed Forces Chief of Staff General Secretary said a military operation was underway because some soldiers were continuing to disobey orders. The soldiers took to the streets in several cities over a pay dispute and blocked off the second largest city, Buake, on Saturday. They have said they are willing to fight if the army intervenes. Six people were wounded when the soldiers opened fire on protesters during Saturday's demonstration. North Korea has claimed that the missile it tested on Sunday was a new type of rocket capable of carrying a large nuclear warhead. The missile launched at a steep angle reached an altitude of 2,000 kilometers and traveled about 700 kilometers, landing in the sea west of Japan. North Korea said on Monday it was a test of the abilities of a newly developed ballistic rocket. And South Korea's military said the North's missiles did appear to be able to live and re-enter the atmosphere, which is crucial to developing intercontinental ballistic missiles. The U.S. and Japan have called for an emergency meeting of the UN Security Council on Tuesday. ICBMs are considered to have a range of about 6,000 kilometers, but analysts believe the missile tested on Sunday would have traveled about 4,000 kilometers if it had been fired at a standard trajectory rather than upwards. Next in the midday news is the business news. The Security Exchange Commission, SEC, says it has registered 2.2 million shareholders since the commencement of its electronic dividend mandate. Director General of SEC, Munir Wazo, made this known at the 2017 First Post Capital Markets Committee, CMC News Briefing, held in Vegas. Wazo explains that the committee has resolved to give a forbearance period of six months for investors who juggle their names for the purpose of multiple subscription to lay claims to both their shares and accruing dividends subject to establishment of their identity. 
The Director General explained that in case of any failure to lay claim by such investor, such shares and accruing dividends shall be transferred to the Nigerian Capital Markets Development Fund. He said that direct cash settlements will become mandatory for all investors in the Nigerian stock market as from September 1, 2017. Investors in the Nigerian capital markets will be credited directly with the net proceeds of the stock market transactions, which will address the illegal sale of investors' securities. Finally, sports news. Manchester City are ready to sell Kelechi Ihyanacho. The Daily Mail says the Nigerian is set to become the most surprising member of the manager Pep Guardiola's summer clearout. Borussia Dortmund have already expressed an interest in Ihyanacho, tipped for the top by former City boss Manuel Pellegrini, and has scored 21 goals for City, despite making only 20 starts. Under Guardiola, Ihyanacho's progress has been restricted by the £27 million signing of young Brazilian Gabriel Jesus, and there is an acceptance he could move on to help finance or rebuild other clubs this summer. Southampton and Hoffingham have inquired about loans, but it is understood that City are also prepared to look at permanent transfers. Hosts Gabon have opened the under-17 Africa Cup of Nations in Pagentil, with a big defeat to Guinea, losing the first Group A game 5-1. Guinea completely dominated the match and went 5-0 up, before Gabon hit a consolation goal in the second half. Later on Sunday, Cameroon was scheduled to face Ghana in the other Group A match. Group B's opening matches take place in Libreville, with Mali facing Tanzania and Angola taking on Niger. The top four teams will qualify for the under-17 FIFA World Cup in India in October, which gives the teams an extra incentive to do well. was the midday news and just before we go the major stories once again suspected headsmen attacked motorists on Abelkota Igora Road Governor Akere Dolo asked on door workers to forgo inherited salary arrears and Namdekan said politicians pressurized him for 2019 false support 10 million Nigerians are asthmatic patients says OAU professor on the foreign scene, we reported that Ivory Coast troops moved to confront rebel soldiers. And North Korea said the new rocket tested can carry large nuclear warhead. For more stories and to listen to us live, please log on to our website www.rockcityfmradio.com. Thank you very much for listening. I am Chede Igwong. Good afternoon.